welcome everybody and to those of you watching on Facebook as well. Um, very strange circumstances that we're presenting how far we've got the two to four marketplace. And my colleagues that you can see on the screen around me this evening will be presenting what we've actually achieved since, um, well, really since, since lockdown, since February. Uh, Nicola Dyer, who you, I think you can all see in the top um, left-hand corner, we appointed as project manager literally a couple of weeks before we were all told we had to stay at home. And we just managed to get that under the wire. And then, of course, we were thinking nothing's going to happen. But a lot has happened. Um, it looks like when you look at the outside of the building, everything's very quiet and very smooth and nothing's changing very much. But actually behind the facade and behind the scenes, an awful lot's been happening. So Nicola, as our project manager, is going to tell you now a little bit about um, exactly what the project management group of um, two to four marketplace have been up to for the last eight months or so. Thank you, Neil. Um, yes, as, as Neil mentioned, I joined the project back in, um, I think it was March this year, which feels like years ago now. Um, I'm the Associate Director at Greenwood Projects, working on this project with Caster and District Community Trust and Lincolnshire Cooperative. And as Neil says, um, it's been deceptively quiet on the surface, whilst there's been a furious amount of activity in getting things set up for the project behind the scenes. Um, an awful lot of the work since I joined is about assembling the professional team that's required on a, a building as, or a set of buildings as important as two to four marketplace. It's, it's an extensive roll call. We're um, working with Claire Roberts Bell as architects, and they're overseeing a team of mechanical and electrical engineers, structural engineers, um, and the principal designer in charge of health and safety on the project. But in addition to them, there's a, a whole raft of, of, of people working behind the scenes. The quantity surveyor, historic buildings consultant, which we're working with Heritage Lincolnshire, um, and a yeah. whole raft of um, surveys really designed to, to try and understand the building as well as possible. That includes everything from drainage surveys and ground surveys to see what ground makeup is, uh, timber survey to see what the timber structure behind the facade is doing, um, and also ecological surveys uh, in respect of things such as bats, of course, um, which um, sadly we've discovered, or perhaps fortunately for the project, we don't have any, but somewhat surprising. Um, and uh, a whole raft of professionals who are working behind the scenes to get the project up and going. So um, the, the scheme that's being shared with you tonight by Claire Roberts Bell um, has been supported by a lot of research to date to, to inform those designs and to make sure that we, we work with and respect what's significant about these buildings. In terms of the programme, um, it's been a, a tremendous pace of activity since March. We're hoping that we're going to be in a position to submit planning permission listed building consent before the end of the year and really hoping for some feedback on the designs as they stand that can be incorporated into that. And then we're hoping to submit the Stage 2 Heritage Fund bid in early March 2021. The work that's being undertaken at the moment, funded by Heritage Fund Architect and the Architectural Heritage Fund, amongst others, is that early work designed to get us up to planning the listed building consent. And then in March, we submit for the big money that will enable the capital works to happen. Um, there is an important note in funding. The scheme that we're going to share with you this evening currently requires more fundraising to make it happen. Um, it requires about £400,000 more to ensure that the whole of the scheme can happen. That is a huge challenge, there's no doubt about it, but the buildings really are worth it. And the scheme um, would transform not only the buildings themselves, but also hopefully have a really positive impact on Caster as well. Um, we really want the community to be involved in these plans as they evolve whether that's coming forward with memories or photographs that help shed light on the history of two to four marketplace, if you're interested in becoming a volunteer or supporting in, in any way with the project as it develops. I'm now going to hand over, I believe, to Lucy and Joe of Player Roberts Bell, 
who are going to show you more images and plans for the scheme as it currently stands. Nicola. Thanks, Thanks Nicola. Thank Hopefully everybody can see the presentation. Um, so thank you um, everyone who's listening and for being with us this evening and for taking part. Um, as Nicola's mentioned, uh, we're Player Roberts Bell, we're conservation architects, um, and we are uh, part of a wider group of consultants who are working on the two to four marketplace. Our, our role in the team is to lead um, the consultants, the technical consultants to devise the architectural, structural, mechanical and electrical nuts and bolts that are going to bring everything together um, and realise the ambitions of the trust and the cooperative partnership. Um, Part of this initial exercise is understanding what we're dealing with. And um, for those of you who haven't seen Caster from the Air, which I imagine isn't very often, um, here's, here's a snapshot of where we are today. Um, this is a bit of drone footage from the start of the project. And what it really shows us is this sort of really intricate, um, really interesting uh, collection of higgledy piggledy buildings that have are clustered in the heart of your town um, and they, they need a bit of love um, and the, at the end of the day the, the main aim of this scheme is to find a long-term sustainable use um, that will bring back um, two to four marketplace right the way around to high street into um, a collective mixed-use scheme so part of that process is as I say uh, having part of the consultant team and you'll see on this slide our very first COVID free meeting um, socially distanced in a, in a barn nearby um, so we did manage to get together eventually. Okay so um, as Nicola has already mentioned there's been a lot of progress made over the past few months um, I think our main aim at the start of the project was to go into the buildings um, assess the condition and kind of understand how the buildings are put together. Um, as Joe's mentioned, it's not just number two and number four, there is a complex series of buildings behind the frontage um, that have been altered throughout the periods. Um, they're a mix of um, 17th, 18th, 19th century um, with some modern larger um, flat roofs that have been added. Um, so our aim was to look at the structure, understand the significance, um, and this involved quite a lot of input from other specialist bodies. Um, as you can see um, from the list here, there's been a lot of surveys undertaken. Um, the main ones to touch on are structural surveys, um, working with a care accredited uh, conservation um, structural engineer. They've been um, they've surveyed the building, looked at the existing floors, the walls, the roofs, um, just to assess whether our proposed uh, vibrant uses um, can accommodate, be accommodated within the buildings. Uh, same with the timber specialist, um, they've been in, looked to see whether there's any um, infestation of beetles and that sort of thing in the timbers um, and rot. Um, and I think this has been very um, key to our designs moving forward that we factor in all this information um, to, to make the sensitive repairs that are needed to bring the buildings back to use. Um, just another thing to touch on, you might see people walking around the marketplace in the uh, forthcoming weeks. Um, whilst we've undertaken initial survey, because um, there's been a lot, a lot of modern ceilings introduced into the building, it's been quite difficult to see the existing historic fabric. Um, so we are proposing to do a soft strip out exercise um, when a, when a appropriate contractor will come into the building, um, lift some floorboards, take down the ceiling so we can see exactly what fabric is there. Um, and again, this will be factored into our proposals. We want to keep as much historic fabric as possible. Um, so yeah, this is intrinsic to our, our designs. And as, as Lucy's outlined, that, that really this first exercise for us and what we've been doing extensively over the summer 
is is casting the net wide. We it's very much um, conservation repair is about preserving and enhancing what what historic value is on 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 site in the buildings and the contribution that they play in part of the town, the conservation area, and the wider context. So the, the information gathering is, is highly important to how we approach the design process. And what we don't want to do is lead with will and um, uh, desire. We want to lead with evidence and information. So this, um, this, this whole process has been about gathering information about the understanding of the building, its history, the actual physical conditions, um, where we can affect change, where we can't affect change. And that's a balance of looking at what's modern and can be removed. And as Lucy said, we've already started this process and part of the engagement process and part of what we're here to talk to you tonight about is engaging with everybody um, beyond the project team. So this early stage um, exercise of strip out has been um, uh, coordinated in conjunction with the council's conservation officer who's supportive of the approach that we're taking to gather the right information to make sure we're doing the right things in the right places for the right reasons and um, so that all provides reassurance to the team the wider funders and everybody that everybody's doing things in in the, in the correct and sensitive manner and so this evening really is about sort of setting the scene of, of where we're at and um, giving you a bit of an idea of what you may or may not have seen inside the building. So uh, you probably, some of you may re recall the remnants of the old retail shop, as you can see at the moment, um, but you may not have seen the wonderful features of the, the, the fabulous brickwork and lath and plaster ceilings and some timber panelling and shutters and things that exist and you know they're all fabulous things that we can salvage retain and celebrate um, and they will form what is going to be part of a, of a, a fantastic uh, new use um, so I think without further ado we'll take you through what is going to be coming forward. Okay thanks Jay. Um, so oh sorry um, so as you'll see, um, these are the floor plans um, for the proposed um, ground floor and first floor. Um, I think the main, um, the main link that we're creating is this new central core entrance um, and this will form the heart of the project um, and it will provide a new accessible stair a new platform lift that will provide and promote accessibility to the upper floors of all the build of all of the buildings. Um, on the ground floor, we're proposing a sensitive um, refurbishment of the three shop fronts. Um, so, and then there'll be two retail units, uh, one in number two um, and one in number four. Uh, number four also has the potential to be a cafe or a restaurant. Um, and I think number four is probably is the, the biggest intervention of the project. At the moment, there's um, a pretty ugly flat roof extension to the rear. And the idea is to remove this and reinstate um, the original courtyard area. Um, so this will be a very nice space for the retail unit or the, or the cafe restaurant with some breakout space to the rear. Um, and then to the back, um, to the, to the rear of the building and um, there's what's what's known as the granary building um, and the proposals include to um, refurbish this space into kind of a craft office space um, and again with breakout space to the um, the courtyard area and um, there'll be cycle provision within within that area too um, and then on to high street um, again at the ground floor that will become a resale unit um, but it will be accessed through this main core entrance um, with the breakout space again to the courtyard. Um, On to the first floor. Um, to number four, um, we propose um, a community room space. Um, this has flexibi flexibility for um, temporary exhibitions and that sort of thing. Um, and again, this, this new core, accessible core, will provide um, uh, access 
to the holiday let space, um, which will front out onto the marketplace. Um, the rear of the granary, um, again, that will be a series of two holiday lets at um, first and second floor. Um, there will be two, two bed holiday units. Uh, and the living and dining and kitchen areas will be on the upper levels of that space. Um, holiday Let 5 again um, will have its living space on the first floor. Um, and I'll show you on the next slide, the, the bedroom space will be above. I think people, you'll, you'll probably be able to see how complex the building is just looking at the plans. Uh, actually, the arrangement of those spaces is actually um, uh, quite a, quite a challenge to get all of these uh, all of these uh, uses in. Um, so again, on to up to the second floor. This core will provide um, accessible um, access to another holiday unit. Again, a two bed unit um, with with a nice two lovely bedrooms fronting out to the market space. Um, and then again, to the granary, which is the, the rear building, um, you'll have your living, dining, kitchen space within the, um, within the roof space there, um, with the idea of potentially exposing um, the trusses um, and taking advantage of the existing roof structure. Um, and then again, the holiday, holiday let, um, to High Street, again, um, will be within the roof space of the existing unit. And there's just a few um, sketches to the right here of kind of our intentions and um, the fit out of the spaces, um, high quality and basically trying to retain as much fabric as possible, um, potential to reuse the existing timber floorboards, um, we've looked at the opportunity to expose existing um, brickwork. Um, yeah, I think that's that. Um, and then in terms of the um, external fabric, um, which is which is really key to the design. Um, again, um, sensitive conservation repairs, reinstatement of any lost windows and doors, um, particularly in the in the granary section of the buildings to holiday let three and four. A number of the um, existing windows have been bricked up and we propose to reinstate those. Um, again, on High Street, as you'll see, um, a number of the windows to this front unit, holiday let four, have been boarded up. So again, we, we'll seek to reinstate those. Um, and then generally, we'll, um, in terms of the facades, um, sensitive repointing of the brickwork and um, re, uh, line rendering where appropriate. Um, so this is just a, uh, a sketch through um, number four marketplace and basically this section where it says the upper courtyard. At the moment this is a unsightly flat roof extension so again, the, the proposals seek to drop that flat roof extension and reinstate it as the original courtyard um, with the potential for um, some nice paving, potentially some soft planting to break the space up. Um, and then above number four, again, we've got the community space, um, flexible space. It's a, a very large space, so it, potentially we've looked at accommodating about 50 people within that space. Um, it's a the roof is a is a is a big uh, void at the moment. So we hope we hope to open that up and expose that roof structure. Um, at the back of to the to the um, rear at the moment where the flat roof extension, the existing windows have been bricked up. So we hope to um, reinstate those to draw some light into that area. Um, and then as you can see, um, this landlocked building in the centre of the sketch, this is, uh, well, known as Suicide House <laughs> uh, for its lack of windows. Um, but this is the area that we propose to be the core. And this will serve basically the whole development, providing access to all the upper floors. Um, and again, we propose a, a new build section of that, um, which could potentially be 
um, glazed and contemporary in appearance um, to get some light into that into that space. And then on to the right, you'll see um, number nine High Street. We've got retail at the ground floor and then a holiday let, um, two bed holiday let above. Um, the intention is that that will be again accessed through the courtyard rather than on High Street um, as the pavement on High Street is quite narrow. Um, and then another section through the uh, number two market space, uh, marketplace, sorry. Um, and the existing courtyard and the granary building, which is this section here. Um, so at the ground floor, there'll be um, small uh, craft spaces. Um, and then the upper floors, again, they will be um, holiday lets on the first floor with the living spaces, exposed trusses in the roof. Um, and again, this, this route at the moment isn't well connected. Um, so the idea is that from these spaces, the craft spaces, the holiday lets, you'll be able to come through into um, to marketplace and up through the core, all accessed off this front core on the marketplace. And I think just to conclude our our element of this the presentation, really, um, this is not the normal way we'd like to do this. We'd much rather be out in the community with everybody and being able to talk to everybody and and hear from everybody. So the really the purpose of the exercise today is that whilst there's a as Nicola mentioned, we'll be submitting for a formal planning application and listed building consent in due course. And there's an opportunity for public con um uh, commentary then um, what we really want to do is, is invite people's views now so that um, everyone's have an opportunity to be on board and help shape a uh, two to four marketplace and just so from from this point on really the building project itself will be a snapshot in in the life of this project and um, what's really going to make it work is make is galvanizing the support for the, for the scheme with the sustainable uses and keeping it vibrant and relevant. Um, so all the proposals here aren't radical, they're regenerative. They're here to make sure that the buildings have sustainable use for the future, um, affording better qualities of light, a better environment, enhanced accessibility. Um, and that will be here long before, long after us, as they have been here long before us. So um, look forward to hearing from everybody this evening. There is um, at the very at the end of the, all the presentations tonight. There will be an opportunity to do a, a very quick poll for those that are here on the on the Zoom call. Um, for those of you that are watching on Facebook from tomorrow, we'll, we'll have the survey up on our web. I say tomorrow tomorrow evening we'll have the survey up on our website. So don't go there too quickly. Um, but there'll be a chance to to fill in the survey on on the on the plans and also. Um, those visuals will be up on our website from sometime tomorrow. So if you didn't get a chance to have a good look tonight, they will be there from tomorrow to, for you to look at at your leisure. Um, so with, with lots of ways of being able to give us feedback. Um, does anybody have any, um, if there's any, any attendees who would like to use the chat button to ask any questions, if they maybe type them in as we go, we could, I'll ask, um, the panellists will see them as they come up. But in the meantime, maybe we'll hand over to, to Alan, um, who's going to tell us a little bit about um, some of the heritage and so on that's been going on there. He also has prepared um, a video, which uh, some of this was, some of this was, goes back to before we had um, player Robert Bell uh, on board. So some of the detail in the, um, and those original proposals has changed, but the, the concept um, holds just as true now as it, as it did then. Okay, Alan, over to you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I think the, the other thing I'll say about the film is um, I've seen these newer pictures of the interior. I haven't been in for a while. And I think what you'll see is a tremendous improvement just in the way it's been cleaned up and how you can see things. So I was, I was quite pleased to see those pictures tonight. So yes, the whole thing I've done is on film. Hopefully it'll work. 
The first part is this old video, then it'll go on to a bit of the heritage. Any experts out there, they may notice the surname of the tinsmith I mentioned is wrong, um, but we'll put that right at another time. Okay, Neil, over to you. Okay, now let's hope this works. Of course it will. <laughs> okay, right. Part of the project to renovate 2 to 4 Marketplace is to delve into its past. Case to Heritage Trust is doing the research using people's memories through social media, recording memories, using written memories, and previous research by people like Reverend David Saunders and the Reverend Peter Binnell. The old cooperative site consists of five buildings. There is a shop at number two facing the marketplace, a courtyard behind with a house and warehouse next to the high street, which we have called the granary.
There is a very narrow and small shop at number three, which has a house behind, but not next to the high street. There is a private house not connected with the project behind this one, which I'm beginning to believe was probably a later infill. There is then the shop at number four, with a courtyard and a house next to the high street. In the same block, but not part of the project, is number one, the present boots. With, with at the right hand end, number five, a small shop. There is also numbers 28 and 29, which are part of the complex and behind the present boots. To put two to four marketplace into context and understand developments, we have found that we need to research the whole of the marketplace, which from the 18th century to the present day is involving over 200 names or businesses. As a flavor of what has been found, let us first look at the timeline for shop number two. I'm not sure that we have it right, but with the help of members of the community, we have a better understanding of its development. There is a detailed description from the 19th century of the shop and the granary, including an inventory of its contents and, using the census returns, the people who would have lived there. The sad element regarding number two and the other shops was the number of people who became bankrupt. At number three, between 1913 and 1928, a Miss Caroline Parsons, a milliner, was the tenant. John Kennington, who was a tin plate worker, was probably the owner. According to the census returns from 1891, Caroline lived with the Kennington family. Recently, the Heritage Trust has been given to look after for the Caston community a number of items belonging to the Kennington family. They include clothes and lace work that were probably came from Caroline's shop. Sticking to the subject of tin plate workers, it looks as if a Joseph Richardson lived in the house behind the shop. He later probably moved to number 28. I have gained the impression that as he grew older, he struggled financially and may have been one of the case to characters. Moving on to number four, there is a record of when Carrex enlarged the premises that part of a Roman wall was discovered. It was protected and covered in for future observation. If this was proved to be a Roman structure, it is not situated a Roman where a Roman wall would be expected to be found. The buildings were not always trouble free. There is a report for fire in the upper floors of number four's house. In our possession are invoices from such shops as Parker's at number four, giving us an insight to the cost of goods and items people would have ordered. It is hoped that in the near future, we can hold some Zoom talks to tell you more about the buildings and the people. We do need help. We would love to hear your memories of working in the shops or as a shopper. Maybe you lived somewhere in the complex and would like to tell us your story. Let us know if you are willing to be recorded. There is now a survey available on the Facebook page and the website. Please find time to complete it. Volunteers are going to be needed. We will put more details on the website and Facebook pages. Thank you.